Hey, what's going on, y'all? Welcome to another video. Today is going to be a tutorial, and it will be a little bit different because we have a reference now for today. And so if you want to pick up this reference, you can find it on the Patreon page, and I'll leave a link in the description of this video, uh, just in case you're interested in downloading the, uh, the photo. You can also find my free brush pack here, which is the brushes I'll be using uh, for the majority of this painting. And they're free on Patreon. There's another advanced pack that has some more brushes here um, if you're a member. So check it out. It'll be in the description. Uh, but with that said, we can get into it. Uh, so the first thing that I will share here will be the canvas info. And the dimensions of this, I just have a 3060 by 3800. Yours don't have to be exact, but as long as it's a portrait orientation, so as long as the width is uh, thinner than the height, then we should be good. And the color profile here is an sRGB. This is usually what I use. So, um, and that should be all we need to know to get started. So I am painting this on an iPad Pro. It shouldn't really matter if you use Photoshop on a PC or if you use Procreate. This is on Procreate uh, on an iPad, but software doesn't matter the theory and the methods are still the same so uh, so i'm gonna start off by just we got this reference here I, if you don't know how to do this you can go to the uh, reference in the actions tab and just turn on reference and then you would tap on import right up there and you would just import the photo from your camera roll so you can go on the patreon save the reference put it in your camera roll and then just import it here and then this way we can move it around and and uh, zoom in if we need to and just always have it on the side of the canvas here we can also select colors from this reference if you tap and hold you can sample the colors um, i'm not going to be doing that for this tutorial and i would advise if you're trying to learn color theory to not do that because it would it's okay from time to time if, if you're learning but i think it at a certain point will hold you back if if you're relying on that so i do recommend just trying to eyeball the color and trying to get more familiar with color theory um, but if you do feel like you're getting stuck or if you feel like you just really just need some uh reference as to what the original colors are you can always use this uh, color picker and just kind of reference and see but again i won't be doing that here um, all right, so with that said, we can start. I'm going to start with just using an airbrush, which is just this soft brush here you can find in the uh, brush pack on my Patreon. And we're going to start painting. I'll just pull off this color palette to the side up here. And I'm going to use a lighter, cool color, just a lighter, kind of silver, cooler color for this guy. So I see the sky area up here um, on the canvas, I mean, on the reference photo. And I'm just going to start to get in that color and then maybe i'll go a little bit lighter towards the middle part and that's just because i i kind of see this this slightly lighter uh portion right behind the mountains and then as we go up it starts to get darker as you can see and so with that we'll make a new layer we can always since we're going to be using different layers so that it keeps things kind of separate so that we can always go back and adjust things and not have to worry about messing anything up so i'll use the flat paint brush and i'm going to get in these mountains here and i would just use the same color that i use for the sky but i'm going to make it a little bit more saturated and a little bit darker so more into these i guess more darker blues here and then we can start to paint in the shape and again, the color doesn't have to be exact. We can always edit and adjust later if we need to. But um, for now, this should be good. And so I'm just painting in general shape of this mountain here, looking at my reference. And you can even make the canvas about the same size as the reference if this helps. And you can kind of scale uh, next to each other and see almost um, almost one for one how they how they compare how they match up and so i think something like this is good and i think my color is a little too dark so what i can do is just go up here to the adjustments go to hue saturation and brightness and just turn up the brightness a little bit and that's before and now after i feel like this is just is better and the more colors we get on the scene the more we start to add to this painting you may find that you need to do that and you need to adjust your colors and that's okay so with this shape in, I'll get another layer above that and I'm going to make a, another set of mountains. 
kind of as this shape is right here in this um in this reference there's like another layer that's a little bit darker so i'm gonna take the same color that i use for this mountain and i'm gonna just do the same thing that i did before make it a little darker make it a little more saturated and it doesn't have to be exact color as the reference but we're just gonna get in a shape here and just have that general shape that we see in the reference and again like when i use references i'm not trying to use it as a one for one copy i'm not trying to make sure that the um the painting is exact in fact i actually prefer it not to be but i'm just using it as almost a guide or almost like uh inspiration as we keep looking back to it so we may make some changes in this painting here that you won't see in the reference and if we do that just know that um that's just that's our own interpretation of the reference and every person who paints this same scene will have a di slightly different uh, slightly different look to it and that's a good thing so don't be afraid if your paintings don't look exactly like the reference because you might not even want them to at the end of the day all right so with this shape in here i may make this one lighter too just because i see too much contrast between these two uh between this back mountain layer and this one i think there was just too much contrast here so i'll just make it lighter and i'll make a new layer above that and get in i guess we can get in if you see back here there's these trees back here we can start to get in some of those now uh and so for that what i'll do is probably just grab this rectangle paintbrush and those trees to me look like a they look like a very cool green maybe even like a blue and somewhat lighter so somewhere maybe in this range maybe a little bit darker than that and you can see i'm just testing putting paint down seeing how it looks maybe a little bit less saturated but i encourage you to do that you know get comfortable with playing with colors because i i know it would be easier if, if i just gave a color palette and if i just kind of laid it out for you and all you have to do is select the colors um but i don't really find that that's a good way to learn or, or or um really improve in my opinion so just try to lay out the colors it may take a little bit longer right here you see i have this this like very cool green desaturated color and i'm just going with this we can get in some maybe more more blues in here as well but Again, doesn't have to be the exact color as the reference. We just want some type of uh, as long as the values are good, then we, then we should be all right. And in fact, I think the values could be a little bit lighter. So I'll just increase the brightness, saturation, and just have some irregu irregularity to the edges of these shapes here. So I, I'll switch to the round brush. Doesn't matter. But we just want some some. Uh, when I say irregularity, I basically mean we don't want it to look like this, right? That would be the same kind of repetitive shape over and over again. And then the reference, you you see it's not like that even. It, it's very, um, it goes, it dips down, then you got the trees that come up and dip down, dip down, and they come up over here. So it's, it's more irregular and it's more natural that way. And we want to reflect that in, in our painting here so just try to get in some irre irregularity to it and some naturalness to it and i will move this up a little bit and that's the thing working on separate layers you can move uh the elements around so if you feel like you want to adjust the placement of it you can i'll just move it up to about here and then we can get another layer in just go back to the flat paint brush and now i'm going to get in this green hill uh scene kind of in the mid ground here this area here and to do that i'll just grab a warmer color because those are warmer greens almost like a desaturated yellow green color so something about i'd say this range and we'll just get it down on the canvas maybe a little more saturated and paint in that general shape and then we can work in as we're painting we can work in different values different hues and different sat, uh, different levels of saturation as well so like on the left side i see that this is a little bit more green 
more of a cooler green, whereas on the right side, it feels a little bit more desaturated and like a warmer green. So just a tip, whenever you're painting this, like feel free to do, like don't feel like you have to follow every step that I do or, or that everything needs to be exactly like every paint stroke that I put down needs to be how you do it. This is really just a guide for, for anybody who may be looking to paint and learn something along the way. It's not like you have to do exactly what I'm doing. So feel free to like change some things up if you want this hill on this right side to maybe come up more like this. Um, if you want to, if you don't like the way that these mountains are shaped in the back, you want maybe this part to be cut off or maybe a big mountain right here. Like feel free to do what you want. The principles and the, um, the ideas stay the same. The theory stays the same. So that's what I'm trying to teach y'all here is, is more so the theory rather than, uh, rather than kind of just do everything I do. Cause I, I don't want to wouldn't want to come across like that and and i don't think that that's even very helpful so um but if you want to just follow what i'm doing that feel free to as well but just just so you know so yeah we have basically this we have these warmer greens on this right side and then we have these cooler greens right here on this left and when i say cooler i just mean if we sample this color you'll see on this on this hue slider here if we sample this color it's closer to these uh, blues, right? If we sample these two colors, they're much closer to the blues than if we sample these colors and you see it's it's closer to the yellows on the, on the slider there. That's basically what I mean uh, in, in relation to each other. These colors here are much warmer and these here are much cooler. Uh, so now in this same layer, I'm gonna take this um, we can just take this same warm color. So just select a warmer color that we used for this right side. And I'll come out and kind of just do this shape that we see here in the in the mid ground of the scene. And I want it to get a little bit thicker as it comes back towards us, because that's just how perspective works as as things come towards us in the scene, they get a little bit bigger. So you'll see the base of it here may be a little thicker. And then as we go back in the scene, it starts to get thinner just slightly. And we can do the same thing right here uh, on this. We can, in fact, I'll make a new layer just to keep it separate in case we need to make some changes. And I'll just sample this cooler green because this foreground seems a lot cooler to me. And I'll make it darker because it is much darker. And I'm just gonna paint in the general shape that we see there. I got this kind of shape that goes up like this and maybe a little patch of grass in the water right there and so this whole area of blue we're just going to leave let me just add go back to layer five i'm going to add in one more of those little pieces there all right so this layer of blue beneath we can make the water layer uh, so to get to that we want to go above layer three, which is this mountain layer here. And I'm gonna just make a selection. So I'll just use a selection tool and just select this whole bottom half of the canvas. And since we're below the grass layers, it's not gonna affect that. So we can just get in just a lighter blue color. It doesn't matter because, and you'll see why later, because we're gonna make a reflection later. So we'll just use this as a placeholder, but we just wanna get in this color here. So now we have the foreground here, the mid ground here. We have this tree layer here, mountains back here in the sky up there. All on separate layers so we can make adjustments. We can make clipping masks. We can do whatever we need to do later. Um, but I think it's set up pretty good right now. I think we can start to get in some more details. Um, let's get in the trees. So as you see in the reference, there's like these mid ground trees and almost in the middle of the canvas, we can get in those now. So I'll go to layer five and I'll make a new layer above that. And the reason I'm going to layer five is, is you see on the reference here, these trees look like they're within that middle ground here. So they're, they're within this mid ground hill section here. You can see the bottom of the trees kind of land in the middle of this. So if I went behind layer five, the trees wouldn't they wouldn't look like they're in the middle of the scene so we won't go above layer five so that we can paint 
into this mid-ground grass section here, if that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. But that's just trying to explain why I'm doing that. Uh, so we'll go above layer five here and we can get in some trees. So to do that, I'll just use the flat paint two brush and I will get in a warmer blue or a cooler green. So like a blue green color. And we want it to be pretty dark and somewhat desaturated. So somewhere about here. And just to just to show, um, this is the color I selected. And I'm going to sample the reference photo now just to see how far off I was with the colors. And it looks pretty close. You can see it's much, it's warmer on the reference. But I'm just trying to show that you don't have to have the exact color from the reference for a painting to work. So like my color would have been a little bit cooler that I chose, but the value is pretty close to the reference. And that's what's important. If you can develop that sense of value, then your paintings can still read whether they're whether you're a little bit cooler, a little bit warmer, or the saturation may be a little different. As long as the values are really strong, then you should you should be headed in the right direction. So I just wanted to show that here. So I'll just select this color again. We'll go for a something like this, just a cooler, cooler green color and get in some tree shapes. And um, I'm going to get in a few like there's a patch of like four or five of them right there in the middle of the scene. So I want to represent that. And I'm just going to go in with this triangular shape here. And I'll use a selection tool too. So I'll just tap on this S icon up here. And this is just gonna help me get some hard edges. You don't have to do this necessarily, but for me, I like the stylization sometimes combined with some of the paint with the edges. And it just gives kind of like a graphic feel to it. And I'll get another tree in here. The key is no matter what brush you use, I'll switch brushes here. No matter what brush you use, no matter what um, tool you use to paint these trees, the key is I want the trees to feel like they're uh, they, like they've got the same shape language. I want them to read as trees. So, really, just to do that, I'm just having this triangular shape, having some irregularity to it, so it's not. It's not the same. Uh, for example, I'm not doing like this. This tree here is very repetitive, just like we talked about with this uh, tree line in the back. Same thing applies here. The edge of this tree is really, uh, really repetitive, and it's just kind of the same thing on both sides. And that's OK if you're doing something stylized and that might be what you want to do. But if you're aiming for realism and if you're just trying to get more interest in your painting, then I, I'd recommend trying to um, have some irregularity to it, which will help it have more of a, an organic feel to it. So just a tip there for, for anybody who might be struggling with that. So I'm erasing into these tree shapes here just to um, kind of carve out of kind of carve out what I've already painted and just continue to refine the shape more. But I'll do the I'll do the same process for a few trees here. I'll speed up the video, but I'll get a few more trees in here, just using the reference as a kind of general placement uh, for where I want them. But feel free to get creative with it and put them wherever you want. Uh, they, they don't have to be exactly the same as the reference, as, as I said earlier. But yeah, I'll do that and I'll be back in a moment. All right, so I got a few more trees in here um, on both the left side and the right side of the canvas and just kind of matching the reference. Not exact, but it's OK. Um, and so what I can do now is I notice there's a lot of dark green, almost bushes in the canvas. Uh, I mean, on the reference between kind of in this area here. So I can get some of that in there now. I'll, I'll make a new layer to do this and I'll go above the tree layer here and I will get probably just the flat paint too doesn't matter too much and start to paint in with just a slightly lighter green than the trees because in the reference it does look a little bit lighter and get in some of those bushes there 
and I think that this will help fill in more of the scene and just bring in those trees more, make them feel like they're part of the canvas, part of the mid-ground area, and just add more value on distribution and, and um, more values on the canvas as well. So, okay, we can get some more out here as well. And I also notice there's some rocks in the scene and you see those a bunch of rocks kind of scattered throughout. And I think that adds a nice value uh, as well, just a lighter value within the grass. So I will get a cooler color since the scene is relatively cooler. There's not like any harsh sunlight on the scene. And that rock reads is like a very light, cool blue to me. So I'll just get a cooler light blue and I will grab a brush and start to paint in those rocks like this. And I'm using the same layer, but feel free to make a new layer if you want to keep it separate from the from the bushes. And I'll get in some shapes here. In fact, you can probably use a selection tool if you want to get in some like graphic shapes, more graphic edges. And get some on the left side, on the right side. So just make sure that you have a nice distribution of them and feel free to use the reference for because I think in the reference, they're distributed um, pretty nicely. So using that as inspiration here, but I'm not like trying to get every single rock down from the reference. I'm, I'm kind of just eyeballing it at this point on, on my canvas and seeing what I think looks good in certain areas and just going from there. All right. I also noticed there it looks like there's some rocks like right here on the reference. It looks like there's some rocks in the water right here. We can get those in as well. And I'm going to do that on the same layer just because why, why not? Why waste another layer? But if you want to use another layer to keep it separate, keep it more simple, feel free. And I'll just make these selections in the water here and I will paint them in. So we got some rocks in the water now. And probably could have made that a little bit bigger. I'll just increase the size of this. Okay. I think and maybe this one too can be increased. All right, so cool. I think this looks pretty good so far. So what I'm seeing now is that I think this mid-ground terrain layer could use some more detail. So I'll switch back to the flat paintbrush and I'm just gonna get in some detail around. Along the water, I see that there's a darker, warmer color hitting the almost like where the, the land meets the, the lake. So I'll make it a separate layer, actually. Yeah, make a separate layer above layer five, make, set it to clipping mask. So if you tap on a layer here, you can set it to clipping mask. And that would basically just allow us to paint within this shape and not, um, break, not break the silhouette. And along the edges of this layer here, I'll just get in this darker color just to indicate some shadow. And we can do this around the whole thing like that. along here as well and on this same layer we can start to get in some more colors in here on the terrain layer so right here in the reference i see this more saturated warmer green patch right here so i'll try to get that that same um indication on my on my canvas so something like this and I'll just be looking at the reference and trying to get in some of those darker parts too, like right here, darker patches of grass, texture, I guess. You'll notice I'm not really zooming in too much and that's because I don't want to get caught up on too many details. I'm not even zooming in on the reference image because I don't really need to know exactly what everything is as long as I can see the shapes and interpret them however I interpret them. I don't really need to know exactly what, for example, like what this shape is right here. Like it, it's so blurry even, it doesn't even matter. Um, but I'm just kind of blocking all that detail and all that noise out and just trying to group it together um, to simplify things. Because I don't want to look at this reference and be overwhelmed with the amount of detail that's in it. Because you can, if you if you try to paint every 
every single thing from the reference, it can become very overwhelming because that would just take too long and it probably wouldn't even look that good. Okay, so what I will do now is just take a break from working on the mid-ground section and I'll work on these trees and these background mountains a little bit more just to build that part of the, the uh, canvas up. So the first thing I see is that these trees could be a little bit lighter. So we'll adjust that. Again, we didn't know that earlier because we didn't have the other colors in the scene. So, um, so a little bit lighter and I will just adjust the shape a little bit more just so that it looks more like trees. So I'm just erasing into it here to get more of that triangular tree silhouette. And one other thing we can do is if you want to get the airbrush tool on your on your eraser and kind of just erase slightly the top, which will kind of fade out the top of the trees just a little bit, not so much to where it's too noticeable, but you see before and after it just kind of gives like an atmospheric effect to the top of the trees. And we'll go with that. And then I'll move to the mountain layer. I'll just go to this one here and add some detail to that. So I'll just sample the color that we used, get slightly lighter. And what we can do is actually make a clippy mask layer above it. And we can paint in, I see like um, on the reference here, you see like there's this lighter, cooler gray along the baseline of the, of the mountains. And we're gonna do that same thing here, just kind of get that shape in there always adjust the values but just want to get in some paint so we don't want to get caught up on like on trying to analyze the color and then we're just sitting there not really doing anything just kind of feeling like we need the perfect color or the perfect value just get something down on the canvas it might be too in fact it will probably be too bright it will probably be too dark that happens it's probably happening to me right now um, but if we have something on the canvas, we can at least adjust it. We can change it. We can uh, we can do something with it. But if we're not even painting anything or if we don't have anything down, then we can't really do anything with that. So I'll go back to layer three and just refine. Well, actually, I'll collapse these two layers and then I'll just I'll collapse layer 12 onto layer three here. And then I will just refine some of the silhouette here and further add to the shape of this second mountain all right and then the original mountain this one back here could use a little bit of value shift as well so i'll just sample this make it a little lighter and get in some paint here in fact that might be too much contrast the further back in the scene the less contrast we're going to see just because of atmospheric perspective and and all of that so we don't want it i wouldn't want it to look like this like this is way too much contrast and it starts to look like there's some clouds between these two mountains instead of like detailing on this back mountain so just make sure that you we're not having too much contrast between uh the detail on this back mountain so like something like that is okay. I think it might be a little bit too much, but I think it should work. So just slightly lighter along the base as I see in the reference there. And we just get the impression of, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just the way the rocks, the way that the, uh, the sediments are on the mountain, but it doesn't really matter. We're just thinking of things as shapes. We're not really trying to analyze too much what it is. So like I see this darker shape here, you see this part here. So I'm just taking this slightly darker blue and getting that in here. And of course we could always add more detail to this and clean this up and refine it later in which I most likely will, but I'm just trying to build, build this up slowly so that we get a little bit more detail there that we can work with later on. But you can see like, this layer here that I have, these mountains, is a completely different color. I'm gonna sample this color and then I'm gonna sample the reference. And you see it's like two completely different colors. You see the circle, the top part of the circle is the sample color. The bottom part is the color that I, a color of my scene, the color of the mountains. You can see how different that is. Like the values aren't, aren't even close. Um, 
in well that's probably because i'm selected a darker part of the mountain but you see here it's much closer but um i'm not worried about that because it works in my scene so th so that's why i say like make sure your values work in your scene they don't have to exactly match up to the reference we you're, we're just using the reference as a guide as a as a source of inspiration but not as a rule or not as a um a particular um standard we're just using it as a reference and that's really what the word means so i'm, I'm on back on the mid ground and i'm just going to get in some of these warms here because i notice there are this there's more of this um warmer yellow part right here and i want to indicate that but these are smaller details i should probably go to the foreground see this shape here is still pretty basic we want to get some darker greens in here along the bottom right or bottom left i'm sorry and a little bit cooler and um yeah, we're just working with this shape similar to what we did for the mid-ground maybe some darker parts right here and switch brushes just to give a more of a variety of the um the texture that i'm putting down that's why sometimes i'll switch brushes sometimes if i feel like a texture is getting too repetitive then you can just switch brushes and, and you may find that it helps change things up all right, so I'm just getting in some shapes here, textures. Maybe what I can do now is, let's see, what can I do now? We're gonna save the, uh, we're gonna save the reflection until the very end. I think what I can do right now is there's this, there's this piece um, on, on the mid ground. I'm just gonna collapse layer 11, which is just this detail. I'm gonna collapse this down on the layer five. And I just want to adjust the shape of this slightly. So you might not need to do this if yours was looking good, but I just want this to kind of curve or have more of this, more of this like S shape like that instead of just coming like that. And so what this will do, if, if we have it like this, it just feels more like, like, like there's less movement to it. But if we have more of like an S shape like that or something like that, it feels like there's more movement to the, um, to the composition and to the scene and in the reference it looks more like it has an s shape anyway so but again you might not need to do that it really just depends all right so it's not looking bad um and my my hope is when we get the reflection in later that will help this whole blue section to feel much more um, detail but the reason we want to do the reflection at the end is because we still have more detail to get in here we still have more adjustments to make and the reflection is going to just be a copy and pasted layer from the from work that we've done already and if we were to make the reflection right now and then make changes later the reflection wouldn't show those changes and we'd have to redo it so we just don't we don't want to have to redo the reflection for no reason so I just, it's one of those things I do at the very end. All right, so at this point, maybe I'll build up the foreground a little bit more before I do this. So yeah, we'll, we'll just get in so just slightly more details in here. So one thing that I can talk about right now is um, making sure that we don't get too detailed with things. So you can overwork a painting pretty easily, actually, if you're not too careful. So if I was to get in here and zoom in like this and start painting every piece of grass like this, by the time we zoom out, and if I was if I was to do that in the whole foreground, by the time we zoom out, it would be way too noisy for me personally. And it might be a stylistic thing. If that's what you if that is your style, then you know I'm not gonna tell you not to do that. But for me personally, I would not do that because we need to have places of places of rest places where the eye doesn't need to be completely bombarded with noise and detail and if we have detail everywhere then that shows the viewer that every part of the painting is important and that's not always true especially if we have storytelling and in this scene this is just a reference study but 
you could add storytelling to it. Um, for me, the focal point, every scene should have a focal point, even if there's no real like storytelling to it. I think that we should at least have a focal point. And in this scene, the focal point, I would say, is, is the middle of the canvas here. And there's different areas you can have a focal point. It doesn't have to be in the middle. In fact, sometimes the middle focal point can be boring, but in this scene, it works. And yeah, so the focal point would be those trees right there, that dark contrast among, uh, against this this dark contrast hold up this dark contrast against these um lighter mountain backgrounds really draws our eye there so if if this is where we want the viewer to look then we don't need to add a ton of detail in these bottom corners or up in the sky or you know in irrelevant places because that's just going to distract us from what's important now, if you want to show something up in the sky up here, then that's fine. But I'm just saying, if just keep in mind where, where you want your viewers eyes to go. So I say all that to say uh, we're not going to do too much in this foreground, but I am going to work it up just so that there is enough to indicate different layers of grass and different different colors and just a little bit of interest, but not enough to really distract us by any means. And it takes time to do that as well. So like, don't feel discouraged if you find yourself overworking paintings because I do that as well. Um, I try not to, but it happens and it's okay. Just try to keep in mind that, you know, we need some type of focal point, some type of visual hierarchy when it comes to these things. If you want to be able to draw attention and uh, create storytelling. Um, another thing we can do is if you go to your smudge tool, you can set it to like, for example, you could probably do yeah, we'll do we'll do the airbrush. So we'll go to smudge tool, set it to the airbrush and you can smudge some of uh, some of what you've painted, like in this foreground layer. If you feel like there's just too much noise right here, we can maybe smudge some of that out just to get a, a softer edge. And therefore what that does is gets rid of some of that contrast and some of the noise so it's up to that's more of a stylistic thing but if you have a very graphic edged painting style then you may not want to do that it really just depends on what you're going for okay so above layer four i'm noticing that there's some more trees in this scene um, back here and these look like they're behind the hill so we're going to go behind layer five above layer four make a new layer there and we'll get in some i'm just sample this bush color that i use and i'll just get in some uh some more trees and the reason i sampled the bush color is because it's lighter than this tree than this darker tree that we got in and we want it to be lighter because these trees are further back in the scene so they're not going to be as dark as the trees that are closer to us and we'll just get in some of these kind of fill in some of these areas back here where you think look where you think it looks good and whenever you feel like you've got enough in there we can move on to the next step all right so at this point what i'll do is um it's going to be a lot of detail adding so i will speed up this part of the video and just get in more details in this foreground so really probably in this grass area here probably on these mountains up here and maybe along these parts here and then i will be back whenever we got that in make some uh, these are this is really more final adjustment stuff but i'll do those things and then i will be back whenever it's time to get in the reflections of the scene and for the final adjustments and all that
Um, a few more key steps or key things that I'll do here would be to get in some, uh, some, some more color on the trees. I feel like they're just flat colors right now. They're just this dark green. So I'll just make a new layer above layer nine, set it to clipping mask. And I will start to get in some colors onto this tree. So I'll just sample the tree color, the local color of the tree, and I'll just get a little bit lighter and just a little bit warmer. So I'll just push it more, push that color more into the to towards the yellows, towards the warmer colors. And I will get in some detail here. Don't want to do too much. And we don't want too much contrast because if you see in this reference here, they're not they're not um you can barely tell but there's somewhat of a of a on the left side it feels like there's somewhat of a lighter green on the left side and that's what i'm trying to indicate here so not doing too much but just enough to get some minor detail in there this is one of those minor things that you may not notice immediately but i think it helps just add form to those trees so they're not just flat shapes now the ones more in the background and on the sides off to the peripheries can be more flat shapes it doesn't they don't need to be that detailed just because again how we mentioned earlier the focal point is within this region here so everything on the sides right here don't really need too much detail um, i'm probably just going to leave those as they are but these in the middle i just feel like this just adds a little bit more a little bit more um, contrast and a little bit more form to them without getting too detailed. Okay. And one other thing that we can do to these trees is we can make a new layer above the trees here, separate, not a clipping mask, just a new layer. And I will get a cooler, like a cooler purple color here and pretty desaturated. So something like this, somewhat dark somewhat desaturated uh blue purple color here and i'll just get in some branches for the trees and i think that looks good so like that value and that color looks works well and just get in some branches to indicate again just a little bit more detail in the middle there and it creates some nice contrast too because these branches are lighter and there's they're so much lighter than the dark tree that it just gives more more interest and it looks like there's a like this fallen tree right here um you can see in this section here it looks like a fallen tree branch to me it could be anything really but i'm just gonna pretend that it's a fallen tree branch and or, or like a fallen tree trunk or something and i want to showcase that in here so what i will do is in fact, we might have to move this branch layer above layer 10 just because layer 10 has those bushes on it. Hmm. I'll just make a new layer above layer 10 so that we can paint over these bushes here. And I'll get a little bit lighter since there is a lighter part on that branch or on that tree trunk that fell. And just draw this in there and then get a little highlight right here as indicated in the reference. And then I can erase some of this left side just to make it feel like it kind of fell into the bushes a little bit there. Um, yeah. And I'm sure you can handle this many different ways, um, but I may I may add some more detail in that area. Like, let me get in maybe some more in here because I kind of like how that separated the bushes a little bit. Maybe we can get like another piece here. Um, maybe it's just erase some of that. And yeah. Okay, so that adds more detail to this middle area here of this focal point of the canvas. And I'm scanning over the reference and seeing if there's anything else that could be nice before we move on to the reflections. And so you see in the reference, the reflections are mainly going to be just this mountain, some of the sky. We got some trees in here. Um, but we're not going to see much of this hill in the reflection. We're not going to see this foreground in the reflection. So just pointing that out, just, just so we know what we're, what we want to get in the reflection. So, uh, yeah, we can do that now. You know what? I'll do one thing before I do that, I'm going to go to layer three, which is this mountain here and I'll make a new layer above it. 
and I'll just grab an airbrush. I'm going to select the side, uh, a sample the sky color, and I'm going to just get in just a slight airbrush to get in almost like some fog back there between those back trees and that mountain. And then I'm going to turn down that layer opacity. We just tap on the end on the layer panel there, and I'll just turn it down to like maybe 25%. So it's not that strong, but it's still kind of visible. Now, that's one of those things you don't really have to do, but could help if you want to do that. You know what else we can do before we get the layer in here? I'm thinking we can add some birds. Uh, and that's not seen in the reference, but but I think birds could work well. So I'll make a new layer above everything else and I will get in some selections of these birds. So I'm just using the selection tool and just drawing these bird shapes in here. And I'll get a few of them in here, maybe three or four. And then we can just fill them in and I'm going to use a darker color, darker than that. Uh, something like that, maybe. And we can adjust the position of them, maybe up here, maybe right here. Mm. We can select individual ones and just move them if we feel like we want to change the way that the formation that they're flying in maybe something like that and let me try making them white see how that looks i kind of like how they look white the contrast that they give so i'll go with that and i'm just going to put them in this area here just in this area of the mountain right there but again you you could uh you could get creative with it and do whatever you want for that you could have many more birds it doesn't matter just do something like this all right and maybe we can get in one more mountain back here so i'll just go to the sky layer make a new layer above it and i'll sample this mountain here and i'm just going to get in another mountain in the very far back just because i feel like this negative space there could be filled in and maybe we'll have it right here as well and i'm just lightly pressing with the round brush so i'm just getting like an open and not completely opaque color so it's more of a transparent color and so that so therefore it's lighter and i'll probably turn this opacity down just to push it back even further okay and one more thing that i'm thinking we could add just to help is these little triangular shapes i'm just using the selection tool and i'm on a new layer above this mountain layer here this mid ground uh the closest mountain layer to us i'm on a new layer above that and I'm just getting in these triangular shapes. And these are just going to be trees that are really far back in the scene. And I think hopefully this will add. See, that's too dark. But if we go maybe a little bit lighter. Maybe something like this using a very cool uh, blue color, neutral, lighter, cool blue color. It's almost like a gray. Then I feel like that could work. Yeah, that works. And I'll get some over here as well. Just wanted to do this last little thing before the reflection. And what this does is what I'm hoping this will do is connect the mid ground to the to this mountain back here. So connect these these layer of trees right here to the back. And um, my hope is that you see the trees in the mid ground and you start to see that same color and the same kind of general shape go up into the mountain in the in the in the uh in the mountains back here so it just creates a sense of connectedness and you can add more or less than i'm doing it doesn't matter too much just make sure that they're distributed nicely that their value isn't too harsh that there's not too much contrast and you should be good all right, so now I think we're good at, uh, to get in the reflections now for this scene. But uh, before I do that, I'll just go over a few of the things that I've done here. Um, the, you could, you'll notice a texture down here in the bottom left and, and right here. That's, this is just a thylacine brush, which is a default Procreate brush you can find in the inking section right here. And usually I'll just make a new layer for this and I will just brush in some textures like this and then I can get an airbrush for an erase tool and just erase some of the bottom parts out something like this just to make it feel like it's part of the scene uh, so that's what i did there uh, you may also notice these rocks in here um, and some of the bottom parts of these rocks here i just gave them like a little bit of a uh, portion of the rock that's underwater that you can see 
or maybe it's a reflection whatever the case it just adds more to the uh, to the right to the believability or the realism of it and these here in particular like this one is uh, just a rock that's underwater and the top part of it's starting to come out so to do that I went on this uh, rock layer here and I just softly pressed with a round brush using that same color that we used for the rocks and then just on the part that I wanted to come out of the water I would press a little bit harder and just get this part of the rock that feels like it's it's uh, coming out the water there so that is that um, and I think the other stuff that I've done is just small details and, and everything like that. So I think we're good to get in the reflections. What I'll do now is take the parts of this scene that we want to be in the reflection and separate them from everything else. So basically what I mean by that is if you see here in this reference, we have the sky, we have this mountain here, we have this secondary mountain here, we have these trees here, and these here, and this on the side and really that's about it that's about all that we see in the reflection we don't see this hill in the reflection here uh, we definitely don't see the foreground in the reflection we see this part of the foreground here this dark part of the grass but we can get that in later um, that's not too difficult but really what i'm focusing on are these elements the sky those two mountain layers these trees and um and that's about it so with that in mind we need to go to our layer panel and uh, duplicate those layers that we want to be reflected. So like I said, we want the sky, this here. So I'm gonna take layer one and I'll duplicate it. So now we have two layer ones, two sky layers, but the one that we duplicated, I'm gonna bring it above layer seven, which is our water layer here. And I'm gonna tap on layer one and then tap on clipping mask. So now layer one is reflected in the, um, in the water and the only thing we need to do is just tap on this arrow icon the move tool and then i can tap on flip vertical and um and now it's just reflected vertically into the water there and i'm going to do the same thing the same exact process there for all these other layers too so for example this mountain layer here actually this mountain layer as well because i forgot this one isn't in the reference so but this will most likely be in the reflection so i'm going to take layer 17 duplicate it move it up above layer one and it automatically makes it a clipping mask i'm going to tap on the move tool flip vertical and i'm going to just bring it down and i want to make sure that it's the right side right here i want to make sure it's locked to the to the right edge of the canvas just so that it's that that it's um in the correct position and if you don't see these lines so basically what you should be looking out for is this yellow line on the right side you can see if it shows a yellow line like that we are locked on the right side. So if you don't see those lines, just tap on the snapping tool down here. And these are my settings for the snapping settings. And we can just make sure it's snapped, bring it down. And I'll go to about, probably about somewhere right here should be good. Okay. Now I'll do the same thing for layer two, which is this second mountain here we'll bring it above layer 17. i want to do the same thing go to move tool go to uh, flip vertical and this time we're going to bring it up just because you see it placed it kind of far down we want to just move it up a little bit so that it kind of reflects basically what we see in the reference so i'm just using the reference as a guide here just to have a general placement of where we want these layers to be and somewhere about right here should be good and you see those three lines those three yellow lines that means that i'm snapped on the canvas and i'm not like too far to the left or to the right where we're, we're exactly in the center so that's that's right where i need it to be and we can do this again on layer what else can we do okay I'll, what i'll do here is i'll collapse layer 18 onto layer three so we don't have to do this twice um so basically just making these two layers here one layer so it saves us the amount of uh, layers we need for the reflection. So I'll just collapse that and then I will duplicate it and then I will move layer three above layer two and do the same thing. And so you can see how this is just the same process. We'll move it down until it looks like it's fit using the reference there as kind of a guideline and making sure it's snapped with those yellow lines. Something like this should be good. And we can always adjust these since these are on separate layers if you feel like this mountain could be a little bit 
more down you can always move it uh, so it gives us the freedom of still being able to move these things around and i think finally what we can do is get these tree reflections in here so it looks like we see these in the reflection these trees here um and the same thing that we did previously how we collapse those two layers uh, of, of these triangular trees onto this mountain we want to do that here so we're going to collapse layer 12 which is just this detailing on the tree we'll collapse that onto layer 9 and layer 13 which is these tree branches we'll collapse that onto layer 9 as well so now everything related to those trees are on this one layer and we have these two rocks on this one layer it doesn't matter i don't i don't need to separate that or anything they, they shouldn't show up in the reflection anyway so we should be good there so i'll take layer nine duplicate it and do the same thing just bring it down above layer three it automatically puts it into a clipping mask i'm going to tap on a move tool flip vertical bring it down just make sure that it's lined up because we wouldn't want the reflection to look like this because the uh the, the trees here let me show you this tree needs to match up with this tree here and you can see that that's not a uh, vertical this is diagonal so it's not right you can see it more clearly with this tree and this tree they're not vertical so we really just need a straight line because the reflection would be just straight straight reflection down so with that said we just want to make sure it's lined up until it looks about right and i'll put it to about right here again just using the reference kind of as general guide general sense of where these things are doesn't need to be perfect but i think that works let's see in the reflection it looks like there's some darkness right here i may just paint this in by hand though and i just want to show this is something else you could do i'm just going to make a new layer so you see all these layers we have here these are all the reflection layers and they're all clipped onto uh, the water layer so they only show up on the water layer so I just made a new one here and it's an empty layer. And what I can do is just basically sample this green color here, this darker green. And I'm just lightly paint some bushes here. This is another way you could do reflections if you want to just paint it by hand. It may take a little bit more time and it may not look as exact as you as your previous layers, just because it's you know you're doing it over again by hand but just wanted to show this is another option on one more layer we'll just make it set it's a clipping mask and i will sample this color here that we got along the edge of this grass this the darkest color and i think i'll make it just a little bit darker and i want to just get in along the edge i want to get in a shadow and this should help the grass feel like it's more realistic and like it sits on the lake more uh, more realistically and we can do the same thing down here on using the same layer and i'm just going to get in this using a round brush just get in this reflection here doesn't need to be too detailed or anything but just wanted to indicate that there is some shadow some reflection right here and I could even draw in some like some little grass if I wanted to, just to get in that little detail. Don't need to, but yeah. Okay, so now what we'll do, now that we have all those elements into the reflection, uh, one more thing we actually, I almost forgot about the birds up here. We can get those in a reflection. So I'll just duplicate the birds and I'll bring them down above layer 22, vertical flip drag them down make sure now you see these three lines how they're lined up with the birds there those three blue lines tell you that they are vertically uh snapped to the birds up there so we just want to make sure that we get those three lines and we can just put them somewhere right here and yeah now we're good so now what i'll do is i will collapse all of these layers here which are all the layers that i just used for the reflection and I'll just collapse them down into one. So now you can see they're all on one layer. And this is gonna give us the freedom to basically um, mass change or mass um, edit these without having to edit every single one. 
So for example, I want to get like a little blur on this water, on the reflection. I wouldn't want to have to do that for all like eight layers that we just made. So we just make them one layer. We go up here to the adjustments tab and I will go to uh, motion blur. And there's a few different things you can do here. If you want to try doing like something more like this, you can drag down on your screen and get like a motion blur. You can drag to the right. Whatever direction you drag is the direction of the motion blur. So you can see the difference between a blur like this, which is when I drag to the right and a blur like this, which is when I drag down. So you can see where whichever way you drag, you'll get a blur. I'm just going to drag to the right just slightly to about 8% because in the reference, the lake looks pretty calm and I don't want to do too much. I wouldn't want it to be like this or anything. Um, so yeah, the 8%, about 8% is good for me. And then what I can do is I also notice that the reflection in the reference is quite a bit darker and it has more of like a blue water. Like you can see more of the water beneath it. So what I'll do for that is take layer one and I think I would just ta I tap on the end and I can just uh, decrease the opacity and that will just get more of that water color beneath it to show. So the more I do this, the more water beneath we see. Um, so I'll go to about maybe like 90% or something like that, 89. And then the water beneath, I'm going to actually darken that and make it more saturated. So you see the difference now. We get more of that rich blue feel underneath. And you can see the water underneath is very saturated now. Um, but we had to make it that saturated so that it kind of bleeds through uh, the reflection here. And then what I can do is get an erase tool and I can set it to an airbrush and then I can just erase because in this part of the reflection, you see it seems a little darker, a little bit, a bit more like there's water there. And so what I can do is just erase that part slightly, just slightly, don't want to do too much. So I'm very lightly pressing with this airbrush. And if you do too much, you can undo it and try again, but just want to just a little bit of a dark spot right there and then also in this bottom right corner we could probably get some of that out as well not too much but just enough and then if you notice that the more that you erase you don't like the the color underneath this color down here you can just go to this layer again and for example i'll just turn down the saturation just because i felt like it was a little too saturated when i started to get rid of that reflection so just things like that um, you can make those adjustments. Okay. And there is the reflection for the lake. And so you could always add more if you wanted, like if you wanted to add some texture to it, um, I could make a new layer above it, set it to clipping mask and like that thylacine brush that I talked about before, I can just sample like some uh, lighter color in the reflection and we can just get in like some texture like this if we wanted or like that on the edge right here you just play around with it maybe i'll erase that out in some parts but you see it just gets like a little bit more of um textured and detailing on this water which otherwise is pretty flat um and doesn't have much texture or detailing so some you might want to try uh one last thing that what that i'll do before i just wrap this up is this is an adjustment or like a little effect at the end. Um, I can make a new layer above everything and I'll grab a airbrush. And what I can do is we'll just get a lighter yellow orange color. It doesn't matter too much. Just make sure it's a warmer color and we can set it a very warm, lighter color like this. And I will set this layer to overlay. So. We can tap on the end here and then drag this down to overlay. And this is basically just a blend mode that's going to make the um, the paint that I put down act somewhat differently than normal paint. Uh, so what I can now do is get in like a little glow effect along these trees if you want to. You don't have to because technically, I mean, there's no warm sunlight in this scene. So this might not even make sense, but I just wanted to share this in case in case you wanted to try it out or in case it may add a little bit of a um, 
more interest to your focal point. And then you can always erase it out if you do too much. You can, um, you can turn down the opacity if you need to and get something like this. Probably erase some out. I feel like that's too strong. But you get the idea. It's just a way to get in some more... Uh, some more interest, maybe like a little glow to the focal point. But again, it's just a small little tip or a little adjustment layer at the end that we could do. Oh, uh, you could also one other thing, an adjustment layer. Now that we're on that topic, you can tap on the plus icon and make a new layer above everything, every single thing else and tap on the adjustments and you can go to noise and you can add some noise. So if we zoom in, you see the more that we uh, swipe to the right the more noise that we get on the scene and it starts to look real grainy. So I wouldn't want to do too much, but maybe we can get a little bit of this if you want. And you can change the settings here if you want to as well. And this would be just if you want to get some more texture. Um, it's not that noticeable, but it gets some texture to the scene. You, if you zoom in, uh, I'm not going to use it for this scene, but I just wanted to share that in case anybody would want to try that out. So yeah, there's a few things I'll do here. There's some parts that I may want to touch up and continue to refine. Um, but for the most part, this one I think is good and we're about done here. So hopefully this tutorial was helpful. I appreciate everybody watching. Again, go check out my Patreon page. It's going to be in the description. If you want to find the reference photos, if you want to find the, um, the free brushes, they're all in that link in the description. I appreciate all the support and I will see y'all in the next video.